My Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to Freshwater Ministries. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're honored to have you here with us today. Hallelujah. Uh, we're going to open with prayer. I ask the bishop to open with prayer, please. Father, we thank you this evening for the opportunity that we have to look into the Word of God with other brothers and sisters. We thank you for fresh water ministries and pray God that for these next several minutes that you will just anoint everything that is said. Let the word of the Lord become alive and real in our conversation. Bless those that are watching this broadcast and may they be blessed in order to be a blessing. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I had a bug flat my nose. Can you give me a Kleenex, honey? Uh, God done it. <laughs> of all things. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. All right. So I don't know. I don't care about this. It's not. I can't find. It. I can't see it. Praise the Lord. Well, thank you for the opening. Uh, we are. We are praying for Brother TJ tonight. Um, as when we close, we'll pray for him and yes. and Paulette, the Phillips family. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me. There's nothing worse than having a little gnat or something fly up your nose. Or get in your mouth or your ear. Yeah. Why? When you're preaching, you just keep on chewing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell nobody, you just keep on chewing. Oh, yeah, okay. A little protein. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yep. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Got to have a little bit of fun. Praise Amen. The Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. So, um, hope we're here. I don't know. That's not it. I don't know. It's okay. We're broadcasting. It's all I care about here. So, um, Tonight, let's go to uh, Matthew 5, 3 through 12, a very familiar, familiar scripture to many of us. For those who are watching, it should be something that you have studied and looked over. And we're just going to be talking about a few things tonight because we're going to have a generation of reprobate minds in this world. They're, they're, um, they're really, you know, transsexuals and, and all of this stuff going on. Uh, they're, they're really um, being uh, uh, forward. The devil's ramping up. His time is growing short. Hallelujah. And so we are in a place where we have to understand who we are and what's going on. So as we know in the Beatitudes here, uh, the word blessed is used in 11 different verses here. And we're going to, to kind of go over this in a study. I need to send this to my, my granddaughter and grandson. We had this discussion uh, about a week ago, maybe two weeks ago. And I really wanted to break it down further for everybody, not just them, but for everybody. Uh, blessed are those... We, 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 we see that in the scriptures. Uh, blessed represents an emotional and moral state of spiritual, out, spiritual man being led by the Spirit of God. Okay? Let me read that again because that's what it says. It says, blessed represents the emotional and moral state of a spiritual man being led by the Spirit of God. We have emotions that God has graciously given to us. Mm -hmm. And this is where we should find out what the emotions stand for and how we operate in the emotional field of the kingdom of God. If we look through here in Matthew 5, uh, 3 through 12, we will see and uh, break down what it means to be blessed. Okay? You know, before you get into that, Pastor, some translations instead of using the word blessed they use the word happy happy 
And there's a big difference between being happy and being blessed. Amen. Happiness is external. Blessedness is internal. Okay. I just thought I'd say that. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Man. Well, you may see why some of that externally expression of man's knowledge and understanding is really an internal uh, um, design of God. All right. And this will, this will kind of break that down a little bit. And, and so uh, verse three, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now I'm using the NASB, the 2020 version. Okay. So everybody's Bible might read just a little bit different. I know the King James might read just a little bit different. Okay. So blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Okay. So what is being said here? What, what can we take away from this? What can we dig into and come to an understanding of, well, first of all, what does blessed mean? Does anybody have a, an interpretation they'd like to share with us about what they feel blessed means? Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Okay. Blessed, blessed is a spiritual thing. You you get blessed in the spirit, and then it will show up physically. But it starts out as a spiritual thing. Blessing is a is a gift is a gift from God. Okay. Anybody else got anything to say? This is a Bible study. This is this is not me preaching. It's a Bible study, so we can all speak. You all, you're always welcome to say what's on your mind. I'm not gonna sit there and point. Oh no, you're wrong. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what I see and what I understand. Okay, so don't be afraid to speak because the only way we learn is through communicating with one another. All right. Especially this man here. He needs to speak more. But that's okay. <laughs> I'm okay. Yes. Um, I think being blessed. Is God providing for us what he knows that we need? Mm -hmm. And uh, like a lot of people th think that something they get is a blessing, but it's not. It's a result of the blessing the from getting, God. The getting is the gift. Mm -hmm. The blessing is the internal, and what you get physically is a gift from God. Yeah. It's nice There's to, a difference between that. The Lord showed me that. I taught on something similar to this. And that's what the Lord showed me. The spiritual is the blessing. And the physical is the gift. It's like the wind blowing the leaves. You can't see the wind, but you can see the leaves being blown by the wind. This translation says, God blesses those who are poor and realize, and realize their need for him. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. So God's, God blesses the poor. God blesses. God approves. God endorses. Uh, God, God uh, supplies. I think to be blessed means that we are receiving from God whatever we need in simple terms. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now in the Hebrew, bless to bless means happy. Hmm. It does mean happy in the Hebrew, I mean Greek. So, but see, happy can also be an internal thing. It depends on how you look at the But word I think happy. the word blessed is a much deeper, oh, yeah. more emotional much. type word than happy. Yeah, much, much. But, but that's what it means. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you blessed looked that. I did happy. not know that. I did not know that. <laughs> so, the only Hebrew I know is well, that I know runs a delicatessen. I got a Greek. <laughs> I just looked up in the Greek. <laughs> okay. I cheated. All right. So uh, you're all correct uh, to your understanding. But when we come into understanding, what we're coming down to is that we, the Bible says that we reason together, right? Mm -hmm. Reason together is we come to a, a place of unity of understanding of what God means and, and what he's speaking and how it applies to our life. That's unity under Christ. So blessed, as I looked it up, and like I said, you're all correct. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying you're all wrong. You know, it's all very good. Is made holy 
consecrated, declared sacred. Hmm. When you look it up, that's what blessed means. It means to be made holy, consecrated, declared sacred. So blessed are the poor, for God has declared them to be sacred. Okay? For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You cannot be consecrated. You cannot be sacred and and enter into heaven. If you're, if you're none of that, if you're not that, you can't get into heaven. So when you put this in context, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, that means you must be consecrated. You must be holy. God says, I am holy, so therefore you got to be holy, right? Okay? So we have to be consecrated in him. We have to declare, okay, all right, the things that are sacred and hold fast to those things. All right? Okay? Do we all see that now? Because we have to put the rest of that, that, that sentence in there. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Well, in order for us to receive the kingdom of heaven, we have to be holy. We have to be consecrated. We have to, God has to declare us sacred unto him. Sanctified. Okay? All right, verse 4. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. What do we see there? Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Hallelujah. What's that? Read that definition for blessing. For, for the blessing? Yeah. I just want to... Be, to to be made holy. Okay consecrated, declared, okay, sacred. So God has to declare us his. We have to be called his sons. In order to enter into heaven, there has to be an order of things that he states, this is why you're here, because I call you blessed. Not because man calls you blessed, I call you blessed. And because you are blessed, you have been made holy. You have been consecrated. You have been set apart. You have been separate. You have been made in a place in the image and the likeness of, of God. And God has declared of who we, declares who we are. We are now, the Bible says, what? Sons and daughters. Yeah. Okay? So he has to declare over our lives who we are. And not, we can't declare it. I can't say that he's an archbishop. I can't say that he's an apostle. I can't say all these kinds of stuff. God has to ordain and has to call that into being before man can re, man can, can copy that and say that. Because if we say it, we're saying it out of order. But if God has called him to be a bishop, guess what? He's a bishop. If God has called him an apostle among the African nation, guess what? He's an apostle unto them. Why? Because God sent him forth. All right? He sanctified him. He he put him in a place of position. He consecrated him for the position that he want, that God wants him in. That goes for all of us. I cannot be a pastor. I just can't come and start to call myself a pastor. I know I have a friend of mine who used to call himself a bishop. He used to call himself this and that. We had a relative that was a, a, was everything. Rabbi. <laughs> a rabbi, everything. He put all yeah. kinds of titles. He loved, he loved the titles. But God did not order and did not command and did not uh, um, consecrate him for that for his in that calling, so he was out of order. All right, and I've learned in my many years of ministry that you're only a bishop to those who recognize you as their bishop. You're only an apostle to those who recognize you as an apostle. That, and, you're, and they're willing for you to speak into their lives. I can go many places, and I'm not recognized as a bishop. Uh, in that one organization that I belong to, I'm not recognized as a bishop. I'm just a retired pastor. Right. But the other three organizations that I belong to all recognize me as a bishop. But to me, I just want to be Pastor Bob, you know. Right. Where, we don't serve God because of titles. No, we do we not. We serve God because of a, a, a sacred calling. 
Right. And all of the all of this other is just dressing. Yes. Just dressing. Yes. But in that dressing, God tells us to give honor where honor is due. Right. Okay. So if we're giving honor where honor is due, then that one organization that says that you're not a bishop and and God has called you to, to be a bishop. You have started churches all around the world. You, you are mentoring uh, young pastors. So you have fulfilled and are fulfilling the call of the bishop. Yep, okay. So therefore, I'm not going to say they're out of order for not calling you bishop. Okay. Because that's, it's, it's really immaterial in a lot right, of ways. Right. But at the same time, they're supposed to recognize who you are in Christ Jesus. Okay. And so, therefore, you know, if if God has called you to the to to be a bishop, then that's where that that should lie. Now, why don't they recognize that? Because their their standards, yeah, it's their, okay, yeah. their standards are maybe different than what God's standards are. <laughs> Man can really get into a place where you know you got to follow my dictatorship in order to receive something, okay. And if you don't call me yes sir or yes ma'am or yes bishop or yes apostle or whatever, then I guess what, you're out of order, so I'm not going to call you bishop. I'm not going to call you. That's man stuff. That's taking the dressing and, and making it into a skirt. <laughs> if, that sounds, if that sounds right, that's, cut, that's cutting the skirt off. Say, oh, no, you're not, you're not worthy of that. So we're, you know, I've, de I've deemed that you're, you know, we're not going to do that. So then that's what it is to be. I'm Brother Edwin, but the people of Pakistan, they call me pastor. Right, that's it. That's exactly right. Because they teach. Right. And then some of us are called Papa. You know, some of us are called, you know, we have different names. Some of those names we don't want to be called. <laughs> but at the same time, we have to understand of, of who we are in Christ Jesus, okay? Uh, um, we have to understand that, that it is God that calls us. God is the one who declares a thing. It's not man that declares it. All right, let's let's move on here. No, no, we're we're fine. I don't care if we stop and talk about stuff. That's what we're here for Bible study. You know, we're not we're not here to to uh, you know me myself and I. All right. So, amen. Okay, number four. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Okay. Blessed are those that mourn, for they will be comforted. What do we? Well, this makes me think of the scriptures, you know, the children of God, when we're mourning, we got to remember that our loved ones, we will see them, you know, we, we, we're supposed to comfort each other with the words that, hey, you'll see them again. Look up the you word know? mourn in your Hebrew lexicon or whatever you Actually, I have to go by verse. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought maybe. Yeah. No, no. I mean, I, I can find it. I just have that's verse four. four. Mourn. To mourn, to mourn for, lamentate, lamentate. One, one person lamentates, crying, weeping with them. You know, the Bible says we cry with those who cry, we laugh with those who are laughing. Right. Well, in the Greek, Hebrew, uh, mourning means lamentation. Okay. But, all right. You know, just like when Jesus went through that one little house and they were all mourning over the young girl, they were lamenting, they were okay. crying. That's what mourning means. Lamentation. At least by this. So that's where the word lamentations, the book of lamentations. <laughs> well, no, yeah, yeah, it's a lament. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. He's mourning over the oh, over Israel. Right, right. exactly. Yes. Right. He's mourning okay. over all because yeah. Israel is going to be destroyed. He's mourning. Yep. Over. yep. But um. Our, you know, we comfort, you know, the Bible talks about when, when a person dies and they're a, ch a child of God, the people that are mourning for them, we're supposed to comfort them with the words that you'll see them again. You know, God's, when God, when God comes back, the dead in Christ will rise first and we who remain will meet him in the air. You know, so um, that's what makes me think of this, you know, because we're blessed of God because we are his children and we can help each other through mourning by comforting each other. God uses us to help comfort. 
God can, you know, God does it himself too, but you know what I mean. He is, is, we're supposed to comfort each other with those words. And mourning is, is a, a deep sorrow. In the kingdom of God, it's an emotional effect of, of, of humbleness. Um, we, we can uh, really uh, break that down to uh, uh, regretting. And when they use the word regret here, what they're talking about is, I am really mourning over this person. I really regret what they're doing, what, what they're going through. You know, we're, we're concerned, deeply concerned over them, okay? Just as like in Lamentations, okay? He was deeply concerned over the people of Israel. So he, he that's an emotional state that he gives us that we cry and weep out saying, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. Jesus, you know, what was, was in deep sorrow over that. He, he was mourning over them. He was weeping over them. Uh, uh, so we, we, can, we can look at that in, in, in several different ways. Uh, um, but the, 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 the fact, the, 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 the main factor to it is that, that it's deep sorrow. Not really so much regret as it is, but deep sorrow, pain for, for those we see doing sinful things, doing things wrong. And, you know, we remember how we were. And when, from there, we go into the idea uh, or, or the concept of that we cry out before the Lord. And it is the Lord that brings us comfort. It is the Lord that delivers us from all unrighteousness. Okay? For they will be comforted. So, you know, when you're going through things in life, uh, let's say that you're grieving over a death, for example. Okay? A type of mourning. A moaning, moaning is, is, is deep regret or going through something of great sorrow. All right? Deep sorrow. But it is the Lord that brings comfort to us. It is the Lord that makes a way for us to go through. It is the Lord and him alone. Man can't do that. We can offer all kinds of words of salutations and comfort to people. You know, okay, you know, uh, uh, but without the Lord's help, we're not going to get through it. We have a perfect example on Sunday. A person wanted to leave here because they were in mourning, okay? They were, they were going through a grieving process, and they didn't know how to process it. And if that person would have left in the state that they were in, they might not have made it home because they were grieving so bad. They might not have, they might have missed a light. They might have, you know, done something that, that distracted them and got hit by a car or something like that. So thank God that, that Bishop Black was here and he was up speaking so I could walk away and God had me go speak with that person and they came back and they wept before the Lord. They moaned before the Lord in, in a deep sorrow state. And guess what? When they left here, they had the joy of the Lord on their heart. Why? Because he set them free. He's the one that gave them comfort. So that's what the, um, when the, you know, the, the, there's a verse that talks about the Holy Spirit. You know, when, we're mo when we moan in the Holy Spirit, you know what verse I'm talking about? Moaning and groaning? Yeah. Um, that can be, I mean, that's... that could be applied there, but, but really that's, that's more of a, a personal intercession right okay okay i just was just wondering yeah that's that's more of a personal but it is still a deep sorrow a deep moaning mourning for for the things of god okay number five anything else being i'm sorry anybody else got anything to say on number four okay number five blessed are the gentle for they will inherit the earth this throws a lot of people off when they read this Blessed are the gentle, for they will inherit the earth. So there's a couple of, couple of key things we have to bring into focus when we're reading this scripture. What are your comments on this scripture? And I can see we're not going to make it through all of these tonight. <laughs> Blessed are the gentle. So I guess the hang-up word would be gentle, right? What does that really mean? When you're breaking down scripture, you look into what does that scripture mean? What does it, what does it say? So, blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Yes. 
the King James says me, me and you. this one says humble. humble. Okay, okay. I was going to bring that up. Thank you very much, really. It's right there, it's typed in for me. <laughs> Well, you know who's built an entire theology on that? The Jehovah's Witness people. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And the Jehovah's Witness people teach that that uh, even though 100,000 144,000 are the ones going to heaven, those who embrace the doctrine of the Jehovah's Witness, uh, the meek shall inherit the earth. I'm sure you well, you only went to one or two of their services, but uh, that, that that's one of their key verses. That's one, that's one of their pillars in, in their, right. Okay. And you know, there, there's, there's a little bit of truth in every error. There's a little bit of truth in every criticism. And so that's why it's, that's why we have to be so careful with certain religious movements and organizations that sound good and use a lot of proper phraseology, but there, but there's enough, there's enough extra biblical theology that can mess us up right. spiritually and, and salvation wise. But poor interpretation. It's the yeah. same thing with the poor yeah. interpretation, because if, if you, you know, uh, uh, that's what that's what's happened with that particular group is this very poor interpretation. They went through and they rewrote the interpretation of the Bible mm -hmm. and came and said, oh, this is what they mean. This, this is bad as Mo, uh, 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 the, the Mormons, okay, and what they're doing, all right, or the Catholicism, what they did, mm -hmm. all right. And any other group, any, any group can be looked at and say, well, you, you've got this doctrine here wrong. Your interpretation of that is incorrect. But if they'll take time to study and they even go all the way back into the scrolls Learn a little bit of Hebrew, not a whole bunch of Hebrew, but learn a little bit of Hebrew enough to ask someone who knows Hebrew and Aramaic and Greek, okay? Well, but I didn't mean to interrupt you, but we don't even have to know it. We just have to know where to find the words. Right. Because you can get a Greek lexicon, you can do what you, you've yeah. got a, a... Well, that I just use my Bible to sort, you know, it's not... Right, but <laughs> there's apps that do that. Yeah. Like I, 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 yeah. Years ago, when I was working for the Oral Roberts organization in Tulsa, I was right out of high school, and I heard the author, I'm going to call his name in a minute, but he authored the Aramaic Bible. And I have a copy of the Aramaic Bible uh, translated right from the Aramaic language. And he insisted that Jesus spoke. The Aramaic language. Well, Jesus could speak well, any he language. He, right. he could speak any language, but uh, he actually did. That was that was that was actual his actual language at that, at that time. Even the Greek scholars and the Hebrew scholars agree that that was the language that they were spoken well, in, in that region. Oh, yeah, because he was from he was from Galilee. They spoke. Well, I think he didn't. Of that time, I don't know. Who, but, I don't know who. I don't know who or who did not speak Aramaic. All I know is I heard the man that wrote it, that yeah. translated the yeah. Aramaic Bible. That's what I was trying to bring yeah. out. Yeah, his name starts with an L. Lam, Lam, yeah. Lamza. L-A-M-S-A. Lamza. 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 I have the Bible. I have the Bible too. Do you have one too? Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay, so back to this. Too much sidetrack. We're going to run out of time here. Blessed are the gentles. We understand it's meek, humble, okay, and it's gentle innocence. All right. This goes along with the pure in heart, okay, but we're going to get into that earlier. The second part of this uh, discussion here in, in this phrase, in this sentence, is they will inherit the earth. Now, Bishop touched on that and how Jehovah's Witnesses interpret that, but because they interpret it wrong, they have to understand that there are thousands upon thousands upon tens of thousands that are, that are in, stand before the throne, more than 144,000, okay? And there's more than just 12,000 out of the tribe of Ju each tribe of Judah, which it makes 144,000, okay? Plus. Plus you have the 20 and the four elders. Plus you have the disciples. So the, their number is incorrect right off the bat, okay? But if you return to Genesis uh, uh, 21 and 1, all right? Turn to Genesis 21 and 1. Then we're going to come back, all right? 
Genesis 21, 1 through 3. Are you sure? Uh, excuse me, excuse me, I'm sorry. Let's go to the other side of the Bible, Revelations. Yeah, I was about to say, Revelation. <laughs> I was about, I, that's where I'm heading was Revelations 21. Because Revelation, well, I'm thinking about a new beginning. I'll show you what I'm thinking about. I was just going to tell you. That's so Revelation 21? Well, talked about yeah. the beginning in Genesis. It's the birth of Isaac. Uh, <laughs> but right. I was wondering I, what that had to do. Jesus, oh, Pete. You talk about being dyslexic, the whole Bible. I just skip the whole Bible. That's where I was going to okay. go with Genesis 21. So... Revelations 21, 1 says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. So the idea and concept that, the, that people are going to inherit the earth, their concept of the earth is as it is now. Okay? And as, as it is now, it shall not be then. All things are passed away. All things are made new. If we stand upon that promise and upon that word, what you need? Click the next. Blessed off, it says it, we fold it up like a garment. Okay. It says here, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, okay? And there was no more sea. There was no more gap between anything that God created. Everything became unified. Everything became as the process of one, okay? Let me, let me show you why. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the God of heaven, Okay, God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and he shall be his and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Now, this is very crucial. Verse three is very important. Because it talks about the tabernacle, the holy place of God. Okay, in the in the tabernacle you have the outer court, you have the inner court, and you have the holies of holies. In the outer court you have the new earth. In the inner court you have the new Jerusalem. In the holies of holies is the throne room. Or let me let me say I said that incorrectly. I'm sorry. I said that incorrectly. You have the, the outer court, which is the earth, represents the earth. That's our entrance in. Jesus says that he is the what? Way, the truth, and the life, right? So you come in by the way. So you enter into the gate of the tabernacle by the way. You come into the truth, which is the city, the holy city of Jerusalem. Okay? And then you enter into the holies of holies, which is the way of life. So Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And in him all things consist. All things were made by him and through him. So when we see this here, we see, I heard a great voice of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle is with the tabernacle of God is with men, and he shall dwell with them, and he shall be his people, and the God himself shall be with their God, shall be their God. Of course, it goes on to say here, and God shall wipe away all their tears of their eyes, and they shall see no more death, no more sorrow. You see, now, you, now you're into the holies, holies. You're into life, okay? Crying for uh, uh, there is no more pain, no more, all the former things are passed away, etc. You just keep on going, and it comes all the way down to verse 6, that he is the author and the omega. Yeah. Verse the last. Now, with that being said, real quick here, because we're, we're, we're running out of time here, I'm getting a little sidetracked here. The key verse here is that there's a new, new earth, a new Jerusalem, okay? All right? Why? Because man cannot fil ha be filthy or dirty in the, in, the, in the existing of the newness, okay? We are new creations, therefore, we have a new body in Christ Jesus, okay? That body, the bride, is being prepared as it can, it now can enter into the holies of holies. Why? Because of the blood of Jesus. So we go into greater detail some other time about that. There's, there's a lot more to that than there's a lot more there than than just that right there. But amen. God is good to us. Amen. Blessed are those who hunger. Verse six. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst. Okay, for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. 
Blessed, okay, are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Righteousness, I looked that up um, myself a while back. It has a couple meanings, of course, being in right standing with God, being justified by the Most High God. Okay. But in order to be justified, as, as we were, blessed are, are the poor, okay? So that to be declared by God, in order to do that, uh, blessed are those who hunger and thirst, all right? If you hunger and thirst after God, then what do you, what, what, what's on your heart? What's on your mind? What do you, what do you, where are you going to? What, what has to happen? You get satisfied. Okay, you'll you get satisfied. You won't, you won't thirst no more. You won't get thirst. You won't get thirsty no more, yeah. right? You you, okay. You're hunger. You're hungering, thirsty for His way, His okay. life, the way you know. Uh, for well, his when you've tasted the righteousness of God, you yeah. lose your appetite for anything else. You just want to follow him, serve him. Okay. So, hunger and thirst, when you sincerely and passionately seek the Lord. Okay. When you sincerely and passionately, because everyone hungers and thirsts after something. But when you have tasted the goodness of God, Right? When you have tasted him, then all of a sudden you really want more. You will desire more. You're sincere about your, your, your walk in the Lord. Now walking by faith takes on a completely different picture in your heart. Because not only are you become sincerely devoted to seeking after him, to reaching and, and reaching out and dividing his scripture correctly and, and reading and finding out who he is more and deeper, and get a deeper understanding, you are passionate about it. When you're passionate about it, God gives you that emotion so that you'll be excited to share it with others, to say, look at my God. It's also your God if you'll let him, if you will ask him into your heart. We, we are passionate about seeking after righteousness. And look, he will make you holy. He, he will do all this for you. And you will be satisfied. You know, the, uh, the coolest part about that is, you know, the first scripture talks about the kingdom of God. I looked up the scripture on the kingdom of God. The scripture says the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it is righteousness, peace and joy, peace and joy in, the, in, Holy Ghost. in the, Holy Ghost. the Holy Ghost. It's this all has all these blessings has to do with us being in Christ Jesus, in that Holy Ghost. The blessings come buzzed because we have him inside of us. And righteousness, when you seek righteousness, you're seeking God's favor because he justifies us. He makes us holy. It's him that does it all. We, we have to just trust and have faith in him, and he does the rest. Amen. Amen. I just want to welcome Philip. He's watching over in California. Oh, Amen. Amen. Bishop says hello. We all say hello to you. We send our love. Hi, Philip. Amen. Amen. Hola, Felipe. <laughs> He's got his first name this time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Verse 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the merciful, so they shall receive mercy. Hallelujah. Amen. Any thoughts on that? Any questions, any thoughts? Blessed are the merciful. Okay. Blessed are the merciful, so they shall receive mercy. It's awful hard to receive mercy in a world that's so chaotic and persecuting us and trying to beat us down. And how do we consider looking at mercy? You know, wow, you know. If God really loved me, you hear, you hear this statement done all the time, if God really loved me, he would let me go through all these things. But that's totally the wrong thinking. Because God loves me, I'm willing to go through these things. Mm -hmm. That's the right statement. Because he loves me, and my love, and I have desire for him, I have a passion for him. 
okay? I have a desire for him. I'm willing to go through whatever it takes, all right? So when we read this, when we read this, we have to understand blessed are the merciful. And what does that really mean? It means that we're compassionate, that we speak with forgiveness. Once again, it goes back to Jesus on the cross. Forgive them for they know not what they do. They're killing me. I've gone to the cross willingly, but they're, but they're killing me. How many times a day are we supposed to forgive? Seven times 77. 70 times seven. What's that, 400 and uh, something? Seven times seven is 49, so. 490 times. It's, yeah. actually, it's actually a little more deeper than that by this. Um, comforting means, um, you know, the, a merciful means comforting to help somebody who's afflicted to give them healing. Okay. Which means if we do that, when we're afflicted, we will receive aid. Mm -hmm. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain or receive mercy. So it falls in line with the, 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 the natural saying of uh, do unto others, you have them do unto you. I'm about to say it's the parable okay. of the prodigal. I mean, of the, um, um, the, the, oh, I can't. the good Samaritan. That, that, good that Samaritan. Would, that, that, would, that, would be, that would be good. That would be. Uh, That's the one I was thinking of. Right. That, that would be ideal on, on the idea that, you know, neighbor. you know, you go along and you help people and in return, God helps you. What you sow into the kingdom of heaven is sown on earth. Right. Okay, and that goes along with the, with the scripture. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, what? On earth as it is in heaven. In order to have things done on earth as it is in heaven, we have to be heavenly minded to the point of being able to reach out and help others that God may be glorified. And when God is glorified, guess what? He reaches out to us and he saves us from this wretched world. Whatever that means, whatever that looks like, he saves us. He gives us the mercy to carry on. He gives us the will, the ability to carry on because we have surrendered our will to his will. Anything, anything else? All right. Blessed are the pure in, pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the pure in heart. How we see, how we portray God in our lives to others around us becomes a reflection of God working in us and through us. So blessed are the pure in heart. How we see God is how we, how we act. If you are a person who has gone through uh, uh, hunger and thirst and, mercy, and, and full of mercy, okay, if, if you have gone through sorrow and you have gone through all of these things, you are seeing God working inside of you because but no man has seen God, but yet we have seen God through Christ Jesus. For they are one. Mm -hmm. Okay? So if you, Jesus says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He's telling the disciples, look at, all you, you got to do is look at me and you're going to see God. Because we are one together. We can't be separated. We are one. Here O Israel. The God is, our God is one. I know, I misquote that a little bit, but amen. All right, so uh, number, number nine, blessed are the peacemakers, okay, for they shall be called the sons of God. Now we found out we've been declared, called of God. We found out that if we walk with mercy and grace, uh, if we found out if we thirst after righteousness, if we have a, a pure heart, that guess what? Now blessed are the peacemakers because God is a peacemaker. He doesn't want, he doesn't try to come in and beat everybody up. He wants everybody to be saved. All right? You know, that, that, that we'd all come to repentance. All right? And because he wants that for us and our desires that for us, we are supposed to be the peacemakers. Now there is a time under heaven for war. There is a time for peace. Okay? Everything has a season and a time. But overall, the picture of our lives as Christians should be one of peacemakers. 
one who are willing to stand in the gap for others and proclaim the righteousness of God, not for ourselves, but proclaiming the righteousness of God, that our peace may be a witness unto others so they may see the goodness of God and desire God themselves. If they don't see us as peacemakers, if they don't see us as those who would, who would say, look at, you know what? There's a better way. His name is Jesus. <clears throat> if they don't see that, they'll never hunger and thirst after that. They'll never want and desire that for their lives. Okay? Email's great thing to add to number nine. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they are, will be called the sons of God. There's so much in there, we, we, could, we could undress that for another hour yet. God blesses those who work for peace, but they will be called the children of God. Yes. You know, the, the coolest thing about it, this is God gives us peace so that we can give peace out to others. Correct. God gives us peace, but we have to, we have to seek after it. Yeah, I know. Okay. But I'm just saying, because he yeah. gives it to us, we... Because we have peace inside of us, you know, you have to get to that point. You know, you have to quit worrying, quit having, and just have that peace. But once you have that peace, you can give it out to others, and that's what makes you a peacemaker. Is because you have experienced it from God, and then now, because you have experienced it with God, you can be a peacemaker in, in people's lives and in their situations. Once you. I'm going to phrase it just a little bit different. I'm not disagreeing. I'm going to phrase it a little bit different. Once you walk in peace, you become a witness of peace. Becoming a witness of peace draws all men unto God. Yes, that's what I was saying. Okay? So we have to be in a place where people don't see us as Christians, but they see Christ in us. The hope of glory okay they have to see Christ in us because we are the sons and daughters of God and therefore we represent not just being ambassadors but the family the body of God the body of Christ so we have to really be be on point and it takes a lot for us to get there because some days are hard days some days we get a little frustrated. Some days we even get a little bit angry. Some days it's a trying of our faith that work with patience because we don't have any more patience for whatever's going on. Some days, some days, we just need to fall on our knees, on our face, and just cry out, mourn, cry out under the Lord, okay? Okay, we have to mourn, we have to cry out before him, we have to go before him because there's nothing else that we can do. You know, um, this is one of the things I've noticed that I'm noticing. I, I noticed when you got to this last one, these are these verses are building blocks of blessing. The first one you have to have, you first have to have be poor in spirit before you can um, be um, a person who can comfort somebody. Then after that, you have to be gentle. Each one plays, you know, each one builds upon each one. Right. Just like the way the fruit of the Spirit builds on each one. You have to have love, and then you get joy, then you get peace and long-suffering. The blessing, these are the building blocks to get blessed. Right. You have to start at the beginning, and each one adds another building, mm -hmm. to, you know, another part he's to being the full he's blessed. He's still in my closet. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, no, that's I okay. just got it. That's when okay. We talked about. And I'm saying, wait a minute. This is a building block. Right. A blessing. We start at the beginning and I work. And I was like, it's just like the fruit of the spirit. Right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Everything is is a step by step in the, in the Word of God. Yep. We we take baby steps, and after we start taking baby steps, then we start taking adult steps. Mm -hmm. We start eating the meat. Okay. So when someone's reading this, they would be reading, if they were new in Christ, they'd be reading on the surface. Mm -hmm. But one thing I noticed when you started this teaching, that during the entire time that Jesus was teaching, 
verse number one in chapter five is my special verse. Jesus went up on the mountain and sat down. <laughs> That's, I have to sit down today <laughs> when I preach and teach. Amen. 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 Verse 10. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You see, now we have gone through, we have been called sons of God. But now with the building block, we'll, we'll just go ahead and put it in there right now. We are in the next level. The only way that we're going to get to heaven, okay, is blessed are those who have been persecuted. We are going to go through some things in our lives that are going to be the trying of our faith. I remember I spoke about this a few moments ago, yes. okay? They're the trying of our faith, okay? Under the act of being, all the world throws it after all the world throws after us. Will we stand for Jesus or will we deny him? That is the question that we have to come to in our growth as we go through one through ten. I am a son, and what does that mean? That means no, no matter what, I can't turn around. We have a little phrase in Christianity that there's no turn around. Now we've come so far. There's no sense to turn around going back, okay? That's where we're at in verse 10. We, we've come so far in our understanding. We've built upon the principles of God. And because we were built on the principles of God, now that we stand, we are now called sons and daughters, and now we can inherit the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. I was about to say, it circles right back to the beginning <clears throat> because it ends in both verse 3 and in verse 10. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. They both say the exact same ending. So it just circles right back around to the top. You have to keep doing this. You, you know, you have to keep doing all of them. The Indians, the Indians call it the circle of life. That's how they interpret this, as the circle of life. Speaking as a missionary, having been to several nations, Americans have no clue what verse 10 is about. Nope. I can definitely tell you. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. I've been around people who understand persecution. Well, I've talked to a lot of people. <laughs> I've, I've, in Pakistan, when I was in Sierra Leone, and I went into those camps where the children and the teenagers had both feet cut off and both hands cut off, Okay, I also want to put this in perspective. We're running out of time, but I want to put this in perspective at one point. <laughs> because we're, we're also talking here, not just in present, we're talking in past tense, not just present tense. It says here, blessed are those who have been mm -hmm. persecuted. Those who have withstood and are still standing. Mm -hmm. Those who will, 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 no matter what, are never going to turn around. Because they're standing on the, on the promises of our Lord and Savior. They're standing on who Christ is. So verse 11 says, blessed, and this falls along with verse 10. I, I, they should have made this same verse, but they didn't. Blessed are you, present tense, okay? Verse 10 was past tense. Verse 11 is present tense. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. You see, we just went through past tense. Now we're talking about us now. Are we willing to stand? Okay? Are we willing to stand? Are we willing to do everything it takes for us to, to be in the kingdom of God? Are we, are we holding fast? You know, verse 11 in the King James says, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manners of evil against you falsely for my name. In verse 10 once again says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteous sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. There is a slight difference in these two verses in the fact that when you go to the NASB, it shows past tense and present tense. Those who have been persecuted are being blessed and they will enter into heaven because they stood. Now, are you going to be willing to stand 
just as they have in the kingdom? That's the question. So when we go full circle, when we look around, you know, verse 12 says, Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great. For in this same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. How did they persecute them? They burned them. They cut off limbs. They did everything that's being done that he spoke about and more. Okay? Boiled them in oil. Okay? Are you, are you willing to say and stand for Christ? Are you willing to get stoned for Christ? We have no ideas, as Bishop said here, you know, compared to other countries, we really don't have any idea of what persecution is. Well, we get mad when somebody takes away a dollar bill from us. But it is going to come to this country. It is coming. It is. It's already started, but it's going to get worse. Right. So we have to, we have to pay attention uh, to the past, present, and future. The past is for lessons. The present is for understanding right now that we may step into the future that God has for us. I, the Lord showed me, and I, and I pray this a lot, this Bible is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This whole Bible is his testimony right. to us to help us to have faith and trust. Just like when we give our testimony to other people that gives them, help them to trust in God, the whole Bible is God's testimony. Right. It is. It is very much so. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. As we, as we do pray, I, I want to, before we just start here, I'm sorry. Um, I do want to speak to a couple things real quick. I'm sorry we're going over just a few moments, okay? First of all, um, we are a mission church. Uh, we send Bishop Bob out on missions. I'm going out on a mission trip. And Bishop Black's going on a mission trip. Um, um, Pastor Corwin goes out on mission trips. All right? All of these, all these things that we do are doing for the kingdom of God. So we ask in Jesus name that you be a blessing unto the under this church it's this good solid ground we are faithful servants of God unto him and, and to him alone and we go forth as he commands us to go forth as I spoke before a year and a half ago I said I wasn't going to go to Africa I think I even told the bishop I think I told almost everybody I told the church I know that that no nah, that's not my calling and then this year here he says you're going to go <laughs> So amen, I'm going to go because why? I, I'm going to obey what God says. I'm going to do what God tells me to do. But we do humbly come before you uh, requesting uh, uh, if, if you want to be a giver, if you want to sow into the kingdom of God, if you want to sow into a ministry that's reaching forth for God's glory, this is good ground, mm -hmm. all right? Freshwater ministries is good ground. And so uh, um, we have a couple of different ways that you can give right now. We're working on a few more. Uh, we have uh, Giftify, okay? You can go to Freshwater Ministries Mesa. Freshwater Ministries Mesa. Download, download the app from Giftify first, I'm sorry. And go to uh, Freshwater Ministries Mesa. You'll, you'll see there a picture that's just a generic picture because I haven't put a actual picture up there. But it will say Freshwater Ministries Mesa. Very important to understand Mesa. There's a couple other ones there that don't say Mesa. We are Mesa. And you can give, and it will be a blessing, and we thank you in advance. We also have Cash App. On Cash App, uh, we have my Cash App we can use. Um, it's a dollar sign, and then it's Nellis Cox, N-E-L-L-I-S-C-O-X. And please be a giver. Please sow in the kingdom. Everything you sow in, and it's tax deductible. Everything you sow in, all right, you know, it's for God's glory. It's for him and him alone. I don't, we don't put it in our pockets only to take it and carry it to where we're going. That's it, okay? Whether it be he takes a lot of Bibles over, um, you know, uh, we have different things going on over overseas. Um, he can fill you in a lot more about stuff like that. You know, he also has, uh, you have a cash app. What do you, what do you have? I, I don't know. You don't know? Now your daughter takes care of that. Amen. Amen. All right. But what, but what we got here is, is that we sow in, and we sow into Bishop Bob. All right. The church sows into him, and he, he goes as a representative of not just Christ, but also of this church. 
So we're, we're thankful for that partnership, amen? It is a very blessed partnership. And others that we sow into. We also do uh, Mercy Ship and many other, other areas of different people that we sow into. Um, but we are also in need. Uh, I'm going to be honest and real, that's who I am. We're also in need because we're at a point now where there's more going out than coming in. So either we're going to have to pull back so we can keep be good stewards and keep everything in, in the in the right order, or we're asking you to sow in so that we can do more. Because I want to do more. God wants us to do more. We walk by faith and not by sight. But he also calls for us to be good stewards. So with that being said, I want to pray and I want to thank you in advance for giving. Um, you know, um, and we're going to do another cash app for the church. I have figured out how to do that. I have to set it up. So uh, we're going to do that and then stop do using mine. But everything you sow into mine, into, into dollar sign, Nellis Cox, goes to the church. It doesn't go in my pocket. That's, that's, it just, it, that's all there is to it. Amen? Amen. Father God, we give you praise and glory and honor. Father God, we bless you for this day. Father, we thank you for this teaching today, Father God. Father God, we love digging into your word, Father God, searching out what you have meaning of saying, Father God, that we have a greater understanding of who you are, Father. My God, we bless you and we praise you, Father God, for, for each and every word that's been spoken, Father God. Father God, let it be true, let it be sown in our hearts, Father God, to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. And we thank you right now, Father God. We thank you for those who are giving right now, Father God. We thank you for those who are sowing into the kingdom, Father God. Father, we want to pray also for TJ, Deacon TJ right now, Father God, for complete healing in his body, Father God, as he's recovering from his surgery, Father God. Give him strength in his legs, Father God. Heal him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, Father God. Give him a complete restoration, Father God. I received that report today, Father God. He's already lost over 60 pounds, Father God. My God, we thank you, Father God. What a wonderful thing that is, Father God. And Father God, for Sister Paulette right now, Father, we pray for her family, Father God, who are going through so much, Father God, so much grief right now, Father God. But you, Father God, can be their strength. You, Father God, can have mercy upon them. You, Father God, can sow peace in their heart, Father God. So we thank you for that being done right now. And so many others around the world, Father God, people that we've each individually know and others that we that we don't know, but you've placed on our hearts, Father God. We pray for each and every one of them, all those ministries, Father God, that glorify you. We lift them up before you, Father God. Father God, we thank you right now for all that you're doing as you work in us and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And one more thing. Um, Pastor Nellis would like to start recording also on YouTube, so please subscribe to YouTube. He needs 50 members to be able to start recording on YouTube, too, please. That's Freshwater Ministries. Freshwater Ministries, yes. Freshwater Ministries Mesa. Mesa. Freshwater Ministries Mesa. All right, Lord bless you all, and thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. I hope this word has been a blessing to you. If you like this, subscribe, okay? Subscribe on YouTube, sign up there on Facebook, subscribe. Tell your friends, tell everyone, reach out. You know, we, we try to be sound doctrine. We, we, we have to be sound doctrine, not try. We have to come with sound doctrine, a sound teaching, sound biblical foundation, which is in Christ Jesus. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.